Hi, this is Alex from Groovy Entertainment. Today we got another CD to play for you. Today's CD is Superman with Batman and Robin, Story 1 for 1945. So let's get started. Kellogg's Pets, the super delicious cereal, present the adventures of Superman. Faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. Up in the sky, it's a bird, it's a plane, it's Superman! Yes, it's Superman who today brings the exciting hunt for buried treasure to a somewhat successful end. Unaware that meanwhile, more serious trouble is brewing in Metropolis for his friends. When Pierre, the caretaker of Perry White's old homestead in Maine, admitted to Superman that he was a black market operator and that the four dwarfs were his helpers, only part of the mystery in the woods was solved. Then Peter and Paul, the two elder dwarfs, confessed that they had stolen a map from White showing where a million dollars in English money was supposedly buried, but insisted that the map was in the possession of their brothers Jacob and Esau. Locking the three conspirators in a cabin, Superman in his guise of Clark Kent led White and Jimmy to a cave near the sea where they found the midget twins Jacob and Esau unconscious. A newly dug hole in the floor of the cave disclosed an ancient rusty treasure chest which was empty. As we continue now, Kent is kneeling anxiously beside the motionless dwarf, while White and Jimmy stand by nervously. Suddenly, one of the little men moves. Oh, no. Oh, he's alive. They're both alive, Jim. Well, that's why. Oh, no, is it? So where's the million dollars in gold? The chest's empty. They stole it. Oh, I'm sure they didn't. They're good to us. Peter and Paul are the bad ones. Ah, they're all bad. If you ask Wait me... Wait a minute. He's trying to talk. I... Where? Take it easy now. Which one is he, Jim? Oh, I think he's Jacob. Well, how can you tell? They're the likest two peas in the pot. I... I... Oh, my head. Oh, never mind your head. What happened? Where's my treasure? Oh. Treasure? Oh, dear, the treasure. Oh, Esau, don't let him take it. Esau, stop, Salvador, stop. Huh? Salvador. Stop. Sure, don't you remember? Jacob stop. and Esau told us they were working with a man named Salvador. Oh, yeah. Uh, what about Salvador, uh, Jacob? He, uh, why, Mr. Kent. That's right. And, and Mr. White, Master Olson. Oh, no, don't hurt me. Just don't hurt me, oh, please, we won't, don't. Jacob. No, no, we won't if you tell us the truth. Now, where's my treasure? You found it here, didn't you? Uh, yes, we did. There, don't. you see, Kent? Oh, what happened to Esau? Same thing that happened to you, apparently. He was hit on the head, but he'll be all right. Uh, now, what happened uh, to the Salvador? Treasure? That terrible Salvador did it. He came in just when we dug up all the lovely money. He wanted us to give it to him, but we wouldn't. Then he... Just he... a minute. Where did Salvador go, Jacob? Where? Yes. I don't know. Uh, back to his ship, maybe. Oh, all the lovely what money. What ship? What ship? His fishing schooner. Now, Kent, you've got to contact the Coast Guard and have this Salvador picked up. He's in the gang, and he's got the treasure. My quarter of a million dollars. Hey, where's the telephone? Oh, no, we're miles from a telephone in these woods. That fellow will get away. No, he won't. You both stay here. Well, where are you going, Kent? I tell you, there's no telephone within miles. Don't worry. I, uh, I've got a little idea. Stay right there now. I'll be back soon. Oh, Kent, you come back here. You're crazy. There we are. Behind these trees will do. Now, now that he's closed in a hurry. If Salvador owns a fishing schooner, he must have had it for it. And Superman will find him. There we are, all set. Up and away! Now, that's Pirate's Cove down there. And, yes, there is an anchor fishing schooner. Well, I'm just going to... Wait a minute. There's a rope going out to the schooner. The black-bearded man in it. I've got to hunch that Salvador down to that rowboat. Down! Oh, what the... Who was that? Salvador, I believe. Yes, uh, I... Uh, well, who are you? Where'd you come from? From a certain cave, my friend, where you... Ah, oh, I see you've got a large sack here full of English gold crowns. I'll take that if you don't mind. No, no, keep your hands off. Come on. Oh, no, let me go. You... You... Now, here we go. Wait a minute. There are 200,000 English pounds in this sack. Ah, so what? Uh, let me go, I said. Nothing doing. We're going back to the cave. Up and away! <laughs> Watching the terrified black-bearded ruffian under his arm, Superman streaks back to the cave in the woods where he had left Perry White and Jimmy Olsen, only to discover as he lands at the entrance that Salvador, his human cargo, has fainted from sheer fright. Ducking back into the woods, Superman assumes the guise of Clark Kent and again approaches the cave, calling to White and Jimmy. Chief! Jimmy! Come on out! Oh, we've been lizards. What's happened? Come on out and you'll see. Uh, Chief, uh, Who's that man on the ground? Salvador, in person. Well, well, where'd you find him? Never mind that now. I've got some bad news for you, Chief. The gold. The million dollars. It's gone. Oh, well, no, not quite. It, it was never there, so it can't be gone. Well, what do you mean? Now, stop talking around the bushes. What? I mean, beating in the round and circle. 
Don't call you know what I mean. Well, it's very simple. Someone made a mistake on that map. It wasn't 200,000 pounds in English money. It was 2,000 pounds. Uh, $10,000, roughly. Well, how do you know? I'm quite sure of it. However, there is enough in this sack to buy Jimmy's mother a house. And that's what really counts, doesn't it? Well, I suppose so. All this trouble for $10,000. Oh, it's going to look like a million of my mother, Mr. White. And now what about this black-bearded bandit? What about Pierre and the two no-good dwarfs? I would take the whole kit and caboodle of them back to town and turn them over to the sheriff. Well, what about the two in the cave? The good ones? Oh, they're coming back with us to Metropolis. What? I'm going to get them jobs in my aunt's circus. Good boy, Jim. Well, let's get started then. I want a hot bath, a decent bed to sleep in, and no more excitement for a year. Well, the bath and the bed we can guarantee, Chief, but the excitement's another matter. There's no telling when that's going to crop up. Yes, Clark, you're right. There is no telling. In fact, even at this very moment, something is happening in Metropolis that will make your Northwoods adventure seem like child's play. A new and much greater danger is slowly taking shape and form. Someone very close to you is in the shadow of death. We'll return in a moment to find out what the danger is and whom it is about to strike. But first, here's your announcer. You know, Pep Gang, it seems uh, easy to get the full second series of four-colored insignia and warplane buttons that come in packages of Kellogg's Pep. Of course, you know that there are eight Army Air Squadron insignia, three Marine insignia, seven Navy insignia, and four warplane buttons. Twenty-two sparkling buttes in all. Each one a real eye-catcher. Boy, what really swell prizes they are. Dramatic looking, with brilliant designs that sure do stand out against a pure white background. For instance, one favorite of mine is that bright blue eagle flying into white clouds and carrying death-dealing red bombs. That's the insignia of the 70th Bombardment Squadron, and it's sure a honey. Now, there's only one way to get these smart-looking Kellogg's Pet buttons. You can't buy them anywhere. They come only in packages of Kellogg's Pet. You don't send in the penny, not even a box stop. You just make sure that Mom gets a good supply of pet for your house. Kellogg's Pet, that super delicious whole wheat flake cereal that's so good to eat and so good for you. Then, you look inside each package for your prize a smart-looking insignia or warplane button. You'll find the button at the bottom of the package in between the carton and the inner wax bag. It's your prize from P.E.P. -P. Pep, made by Kellogg's of Battle Creek. And now, back to the adventures of Superman. While Superman was winding up the mystery of the North Woods, a strange scene boding serious danger for the Man of Steel and his friends is taking place. In Playland, an amusement park on the outskirts of Metropolis, a wooden conical structure built to resemble a small lighthouse stands beside a concession known as the River of Horrors. Inside the Falls Lighthouse is a single dark circular room, windowless and lit dimly by one shaded lamp. In an armchair beside the lamp sits a heavy-set middle-aged man, dressed in well-tailored clothes and wearing a massive signet ring glittering on his right hand. His few remaining thin gray hairs are combed carefully across a large, well-shaped head, and in appearance, he could well pass for a prosperous banker or doctor. Now his regular but heavy features are set in a twisting scowl, and his deeply pouched small eyes, set under almost hairless brows, flash angry fire at the pretty dark-haired girl who sits in a chair across from him, her manicured fingers playing nervously with strings of cheap pearls which fall in many loops over a flashy red dress. She's waiting for another outburst from the heavy-set man, and soon it comes. Not a fool, they say. Stupid, ignorant fool. Wouldn't endanger all of us. I'd willingly turn you over to the police, but you pay for your stupidity in the electric chair. Please don't talk that way, Dr. Bly. I couldn't help what I'd done. When this dumb dick makes a pass at me, I... You shot him. You shot a federal officer. You know what that means? Yeah, sure. But I had to leave him have it. And I saw this dick waiting for me in the hotel lobby, and he says to me like the jig is up, Miss Dixie Lamar, I believe. Well, I, I just lost my head. Yes, obviously. Well, I, I had my gun in my bag, and my hand just naturally pulled it out, and, well, I left him have it. With a dozen people in the lobby to see you and identify you. How many times have I told you not to carry a gun? Not that I drilled and drilled into you that if you're ever arrested to go along peaceably? Yeah, I know. Doc, I lost my head. Your head would be no great loss. My head is in danger now. And others who are valuable to me. At least get you, I'm ruined. Ruined, do you understand? How about me? I'm the one with the murder rap. I'm the one who will burn if they nab me. A small loss indeed. Oh, why did I ever get mixed up with an empty head like you? Because you needed me to help you catch the suckers for your phony oil stock racket, that's why. I did my share. Now you've got to get me out of this mess. Yes, of course, but how? We can't keep you locked up in this amusement park for more than another week. Closed for the season on the 15th, you know. It does. Gee, what do we do? Hi, Jake. But who's that? Take it easy, relax. Ah, oh, it's only happy. What's the idea, Happy? Why didn't you 
give the note before you unlock the door. Hold everything, Doctor. I got no time for knocking on doors. Me, I'm cooking with gas, did I say? Gas, I mean that stuff in the atom box. What I mean is, I'm hot, see? Ah, oh, look, this ain't no time for jitterbug and jive hat. We're in trouble. Serious trouble. Ain't I after that boss? Sure I am. So that's why I'm waltzing in with this. With what? This newspaper here. Dig what you see here. Dig it good, Jackson. Will you stop waving that newspaper in front of my face, you... you oh! Go on, Doctor. Dig that paper. Look at the dream puss right there, see? Who does she look like, huh? Well, right there. Good heavens. They've got a picture of Dixie in the Daily Planet. My picture? No, they couldn't. They... Ray likes just to let your hair down, you too, Doctor. What's left of your hair, I mean. Read what it says under the picture of the slick chick. Go on. Lois Lane, star reporter for the Daily Planet. To her address the... Lois Lane. This isn't Dixie. It ain't? Let me see. Of course it ain't, but this newspaper dummy's a dead ringer for you, baby. I says to myself when I see it, I says, this is schmaltzy. There ought to be something here, happy old mellow man. Show it to the doctor, big time operator. He's smart. He'll dig the low down on it, I says. This first thing is a double for you, Dixie. Yeah. I'd swear she was me. Yes. What would all those witnesses who saw you shoot the federal man? I've got it. Got what, Doc? You dig something, Jackson? I see the way out of our difficulty. Yeah. All our troubles are over. Why, this is perfect. Absolutely perfect. <laughs> Chuckling, the man known as Dr. Bly looks gloatingly at the photograph of Lois Lane in the Daily Planet. What is in his cunning mind? What sinister scheme is he preparing for the unsuspecting Lois? Fellows and girls, don't miss tomorrow's exciting episode when we begin a fascinating new story which will try the strength and powers of Superman to the limit. Tune in same time, same station for The Adventures of Superman. Faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. Look, up in the sky, it's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. Fellows and girls, be sure to follow the adventures of Superman. Brought to you every day, Monday through Friday, same time, same station, by the makers of that super delicious cereal, Kellogg's Pep. And for other thrilling adventures of Superman, see your local newspaper. Superman is also a copyrighted feature, appearing in Superman DC publications. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. So... That was Superman with Batman and Robin from 1948, Story 1. So if you like, subscribe, share, and comment, and have a groovy day. We have another video coming out real soon.